shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy God of Israel, your Savior. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be confident. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of this day, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If they were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Never let it be afraid.
Father, it's in this season of time and trials and testing, God, that, oh God, that we find out just how great you are. Father, we just ask you, even in the midst of this, to show yourself mighty, show yourself strong, even to the ones who don't know you yet, God. We pray that something will be said on today that will incline their soul unto you, God. Father, as we stretch and lift our hands unto thee on tonight, on today, God, we just embrace you in the fullness of your power. But we ask you to send forth that, that spirit of peace, that spirit of comfort that only you know how to send. Oh, God, we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus, as we clear our minds and try to move all other thoughts out of, out of our way, God, we ask you, God, to come in, God, in a mighty way. Oh, God, we just ask you, God, if there's any sins that are among us, God, we ask for your forgiveness right now. Father, we thank you, God, as we stand here for the times that we've known, the times that we spent. Oh, God, with Sister Lily and Farrah, God. We thank you for her life and thank you, God, for being able to know her, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for her offsprings, her sons and her daughters and her grandchildren, God. The entire family, God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for each and every one that has assembled themselves here among us on today, God. Oh, God, just to give your name to praise. Just to acknowledge you as the creator of life, God. Oh, God, just to, just to honor you, God, as the great I am, God. Oh, just to lift you up in everything that you are. For you said, I am that I am today, God. And God, because you are who you are, you made us who we are, God. Fearfully and wonderfully in your name, God. So it is right now, God, we're going to give you the glory in spite of the pain. We're going to give you the honor in spite of the tears, God. Oh, but God, God, because you're so worthy. And so, Father, right now, right now, God, wrap your loving arms around them. Comfort them, God. And you said even while we are yet speaking that you would answer, your word also declares that you would dry the very tears from our eyes. And so, Father, we just ask you to dry the tears. Comfort the spirit, God. Oh, God, strengthen the weak. In the name of Jesus, God, we decree and declare peace that surpasses all level of human understanding. Peace. Even when we don't understand what's going on, God, peace. We ask for your peace, God. Even after we leave this place again today, God, and we reflect upon the many times we've spent in her presence, God, now we can rejoice because she's in your presence. And so, Father, we can't say anything right now, but thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being our all-loving, all-knowing, omnipotent God. Thank you, God, that you can comfort us wherever we are at the same time. Because that's who you are. And we thank you. And we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And at this time, it will be a musical selection. My life is in your hands.
of the Lord. Amen. Because in our hands, anything can happen. But in his hands, that's where you find the safety. That's where you find the comfort. That's where you find the protection. Raise your hand today if your life is in the hands of the Lord. See, it's important to understand that when your life is in the hands of although things may happen, you got to protect You got to, oh, let me stop. My time is a little bit later on. Hallelujah. Right now, at this time, there will be a silent reading of the obituary, followed by any acknowledgments, and then they have on the program remarks from family and friends. And I want you to take note that it does say two minutes for family and friends. Two, two minutes. We'll ring the bell after two minutes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're just going to have, have a uh, silent reading of the obituary, acknowledgments, and then the remarks. Because she is not lost. Yeah. She has gone on home to be with the Lord. And if we who remain want to see our sister, our mother, our beloved again, we must live as she lived, serve as she served, and love as she loved. You are continuously in our thoughts and prayers, and we are here for you however and whenever you need us. With heartfelt sympathy, Dr. Fred T. Sims, Senior Pastor and Presiding Prelate, First Lady Marilyn Sims, Elder Vanessa Woodson, Church Club. On behalf of the Jones Crossroad Church family, our deepest sympathy goes out to your family. This is not a well, it's not a sad time, um, but we know that God will comfort you. He will keep you. As we know, brighter days are coming. And we know where our sister is. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And he sees every one of your tears. He does. Okay, the acknowledgments. Wishing you peace at this time, a sad time of sadness, and hoping you know you're not alone in your sorrow. Friends, 
and loved ones are lifting you up in prayer now and in the days to come with love and prayers and I believe that name is LaFarence you all need to forgive me if I mispronounce the names peace be still when Jesus said peace be still the winds and the waves they obey his will as he calms the storms he calms your fears. He brings grace and sorrow and dries your tears. So depend on him to see you through and find comfort in his love for you. Sending you prayers for strength, thoughts for healing, wishes for peace, my deepest condolences to you and your family, Janice Jones and family. with heartfelt sympathy. Footprints on the heart. Some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some people move our souls to dance. They awaken us to new understanding with a passive whisper to their wisdom. Some people make the sky more beautiful to grace upon. They stay in our lives for a while the footprints in our hearts and we never ever the same and that is from this card is signed by a lot of people well, it's signed by a lot a lot of people and in conclusion it says our memories of those we love are like bright and shining stars may the beauty of your memories soften your pain and may the love of family and friends bring you peace and joy. Amen. Amen. At this time, if there are any remarks from family and friends, we will ask you to come forward at this time. And at the conclusion of the remarks, we will have another musical selection from the Minister of Music. God bless you. with Nima, you're going to have a story to come back with. Yeah, and uh, yeah. she was silly, and she made sure that everybody was laughing. So her background, growing up, I spent a lot of time with Nima. I was her shadow. And when I was in college and in high school, I used to drive her to the grocery store, do all of her errands. And she would call me up, and she'd be like, Hey, can you come pick me up? We can go to the store, I'll get you some stuff. It didn't matter, I didn't need anything. But one of her regular schedules was to go to the grocery store, then to the post office, then home. So we had finished up that day, and we get to the post office, and I'm sitting in the car, because she says, don't worry about it, we'll do what I need to do. So she goes in, and I'm waiting. And it's taking a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. And I see her come from a different direction than from the door of the post office. And she, her face is beet red, and she's just laughing so hard. She's just like, ha, 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 ha. And she gets in the car, and she's just, she's sweating from laughing so hard. And she sits down, and I look at her, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? She says, well, I was, ta I was talking to you as I was getting in the car. I was complaining about this, uh, what happened in the post office, and I was getting real annoyed by it. And she was just, she was explaining the story. She was getting real heated, real animated. And she says that she went and she put her buckle in her seatbelt, and you know, she's still talking and complaining. She turns around and she looks, and it's this white man sitting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at him and she says, you're not my granddaughter. <laughs> 
No, ma'am, I am not. <laughs> so she gets up and she gets out of the car, and that's when I see her face going feet red. <laughs> and she sits in the car and she looks at me, and I'm, and you know, she's telling the story. And afterwards, like I'm laughing, and my face is like I'm crying. And she looks at me and she slumps in her chair and she goes, "Don't you tell nobody." <laughs> I looked at her without missing a beat. I said, oh, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> and so that's one of my favorite stories to tell about her because she was just, she was silly. And I knew that I could say, I could say things to her that if anybody else did, you were going to get your hair snatched. And so I know that I had those kind of very special moments with her that I don't think other people have got to see that side of her. I'm just going to follow up with the other part of that story there. Uh, Mama was a character, I'm going to tell you. She's a piece of work, right? So she, she was with all of us forever, even through when we went to the military. She moved with us. She got to know all of our friends and everything. And she just cut up. But I got to tell you about this one time when she uh, was driving. She never would deny. I kept telling her, Mom, you need, you need to stop driving. I'm going to take your driver's license. I'm going to take your keys. You're not going to drive anymore. So Mom's driving. And I get this thing in the mail. It's from the Department of Motor Vehicles about a ticket. It was like a, a red light ticket, not knowing that they send you the video. So I go in and I look at the video, and Tiffany looks at the video. She said, that's Nana. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Mama told uh, Tiffany, that's not me. <laughs> uh, Tiffany said, but Nana, that's your car. That's not my car. <laughs> she said, but Nana, and they zoomed in. Oh, you can see her hair. Nana, that's your hair. That is not my hair. <laughs> so now, that is you. And she's like, let me look. Yeah, I guess that is me. <laughs> after that, we took those those keys, and she just, that's when Tiffany started toting her around. And the one thing that Tiffany always had to take her to the grocery store was a Sprite and a bag of Lay's regular potato chips. Yes. <laughs> Don't come back to that house with anything other than regular Lay's plain potato chips. And other than that, my mom always said, uh, no matter what, she wanted to come right back here where she grew up. Her her mom is right outside there, Lily Ann Fryer Street. It's my grandmother, so she's out there. And so we promised her, and Garnet took care of everything and made sure that we made the contact that she would be out here, but you guys allowed us to have her here, even though she was not a member. But this is where her family's from, this is where we're from, this is where everybody we know is, is buried. Yeah. So we thank you for letting us to be a part of your family. Amen. Everyone know in the family, but those of, of you who not that's not in the family, I'm Curtis Neal. But I just had to say a word, Sonia, because your mother, when I was a kid before you all were born, your mother would come down to North Carolina to visit. And for some reason, all family always came to my mother's house to visit. So I got to know your, your mother really, really well when I was a kid. And, and the word was when I was a kid that I was spoiled, <coughs> but your mother helped out with that. <laughs> because she and uh, my cousin uh, Beatrice back there, we call her Tuki, I thought when I was a kid that they were sisters because they were so close, they just was together all the time. But then as I grew older, I learned that they were first cousins, my first cousins and first cousin each. 
But to make a long story short, I only got two minutes, and I could talk to you a long time about this. <laughs> but I recall when I was a kid, your mother always looked out for me when she was around and down, and Beatrice and she was always together. I recall with Beatrice, I was on the school bus, and back then we didn't have toys, but we made toys. You know, and I, I'm older than you think. We had these pop guns that we would shoot. And I was shooting the bus driver. <laughs> and uh, I reminded him of that at my church at a, at a outing last year, and he still remembered that he still don't like it. <laughs> but Beatrice and uh, your mother was on there, and they would not let him bother me. They just sit down, don't bother me. That's all I got to say. My two minutes should be about it. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate my nana, and I appreciate all of you guys for being here today. Um, and those of you who do know her, well, everybody knows my nana, um, but <laughs> to know her was to love her. Um, I recently found out she was an Aries, actually. Birthday, March 26th, my due date uh, for that little lady back there was March 24th. So, uh, yeah, just knowing that she was an Aries makes a lot of sense now. I remember this one this one time, I was uh, somewhere I wasn't supposed to be after school. <laughs> and this little fiery lady and that little lady up in the front row, <laughs> they came, I'm like in the back of the house with my boyfriend at the time, and his little brother comes back there and he's like, some old lady's at the door. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I think that's your Nana. Y'all, Miss Brenda and my Nana came all the way to his house to come pick me up and, <laughs> and take me home. Um, well, I drove, they followed me home. I got in my car, they got in there, and they followed me all the way home. Um, but yeah, like I said, Nana was, Nana was a firecracker. That's my role with them, we had a little saying. Nana and Ari stick together like white and rice.
We ask you to speak clearly, speak loudly. Father God, we pray that they hear, see, and experience all of thee and none of me, that you will be magnified and glorified, and your people edified and sanctified, and the enemy horrified in this place. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And if I had to choose a title for this, I would say, He Heard the Cry. He Heard the Cry. This life is full of twists and turns. It's full of ups and downs. It's full of ins and outs, successes and failures, victories and defeats. You get the picture. So much so that we find ourselves wondering how we're going to make it through these tragedies or some of the things that occur in life. One of the most difficult issues in life to deal with is that of a loss, the loss of a loved one. In trying to process the loss, we sometimes reflect upon what was, what is, and what could have been. A void has been left as a result of this individual leaving our lives. We discover that we have to readjust uh -huh, and embrace this new normal. This new normal, there will be some different aspects of living. Amen. Some different aspects of life taking place. The dynamics of relationships can change as a result of someone leaving us. It is during these seasons and through times like these that the ones that you are dealing with, they're dealing with distractions. Their, their ideas and their mind is all over the place. Amen? Amen. This is a time when your focus is not clear and the enemy will take this opportunity, amen, amen to come in and to sow discord. And let me put a footnote right here because sometimes in in Anytime someone leaves and it leaves that void, it causes us to think all kinds of things, all kinds of ways. Amen. And do you know that when we speak at a funeral or a homecoming celebration, although we memorialize and we edify the one that's gone on, but the message is really for those who remain. Tell somebody, this thing is about me on today. Because God has a message for those that are here on today. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you that during these times when you're going through the struggle, when you're going through distractions, when you're going through hurt, when you're going through grief, this is not the time to fall apart, nor is this the time to grow apart. This is a time that the family needs to be united more than ever, for I hear in the word of God that united we stand and divided we fall. Uh-huh. This lost beloved is final. The heart cannot always come or articulate accurately what is going on. How do I process this? Because this is mother. How do I deal with this? This is the one who gave me life. How do I go on from point A to point B in the same manner I did before? How do I get up in the morning and go through the routine that I had when mother was there? How do I go on? Oh, mm, the heart can't comprehend it all. But we have to understand that the impact of the void is with different people based on the relationship that they had with the individual while they were here. Life changes are sometimes difficult to embrace, amen, for some initially. But can I tell you, when you have Jesus, it's something about when you have Jesus all over the earth. He knows how to dry the tears. Although you're feeling bad about it and you're falling apart, he knows how to put you back together again. Although your heart may be hurt and your heart may be crushed, he the one who specializes in mending broken hearts. Oh, you may be weak, but he is one. Hallelujah, when you got him on your side, he knows how to strengthen you. Tell somebody today he heard of a cry. Amen. When I look at this thing, I, I find out that the Bible tells us that when we call on him, that he will answer. Yeah. So in other words, when I call him, his ear is in tune to my voice. Yeah. And so when I say Jesus, when I call When we 
look at this thing, we find that to cry not only means the shedding of tears as an expression of grief or pain, but to cry also describes a type of sound yes. that emerges from the mouth, such as a shout or a scream. See, in this life, there are times when we're going to laugh. There are times when we're going to cry. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 teaches us that there is a time to be born, a time to die, there's a time to weep, there's a time to mourn, there's a time for this, there's a time for that. And it said that he makes everything new in his time. I love Ecclesiastes because he puts things into perspective to let us know that it's not bad to cry, but sometimes it's okay. It's not bad to mourn, sometimes it's okay. Right. 
does mighty things. There's truly no God like him. No God like him. No God like him. When we look in the scriptures, a few scriptures, Isaiah 41 and 10, where we find that God hears and he responds. Isaiah 41 and 10 said, God said, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. He's encouraging even his children even then. He's letting them know who he is and what he's able to do and what he won't do. He said, what I won't do is leave you. Psalm 34 and 17, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from all their troubles. Exodus 3 and 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. 1 John 5 and 14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask According to his will, he will answer us. He hears us. Psalms 18 and 6 says, in my distress, in my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. From his temple, he what? He heard my voice. And my cry came before him into his ears. What am I saying today? And that God hears your very cry. And one of the greatest things he wants to hear is when somebody
open you. Now, how much dirt you have done. Jesus said, I'm still standing. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I just need you to open it up and let me come in. And when he comes in, I'm telling you, it's going to make a change in your life. Because he's going to come back. He said, The dead in Christ will be the first to rise. The dead in Christ will be the first to rise. And they, they who remain, and you're in here. You will be caught up to meet him in the air. That's what the word says. That's his promise. He's made some promises to us. He made a promise to her. He's in his word. He said, I will never leave you. No will I forsake you. I heard David said, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsake or his seed bearing for granted. That's the kind of God we serve in the house all day. Thank you. 